I'm uh, pleased to say I'm joined by the Health Minister. Welcome to Wales at Six and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Well, we've had just a couple of examples there of people waiting for treatment and it's a staggering amount, almost a fifth of the population. You did announce a cash injection last week, but that's not going to be enough and it's not going to be as radical as, as we need, is it? Well, that's just the initial injection of cash. That's 100 million, of course, just to get the system rolling. But of course, we will need to think differently. We'll have to act radically. We'll have to use the new digital technologies. But more than anything, we need to harness the, the energy that's really been used to bring people together during the pandemic. And what we know is when the NHS works together uh, with their partners, we can be really transformative. And we've proved that. We've got the third best vaccination rates on the planet and we need to use that energy now to address the issue of waiting lists. Your predecessor talked about not being able to get back to pre-COVID waiting times um, for possibly five years. And they weren't necessarily something to be proud of, were they, especially in some sectors. So what is this radical thinking going to be? What is it that you, you talk about speeding up the system? What are you going to do to, to enable that? And to, are we going to bring it down from five years or, or is that just impossible? Well, I think it is important to manage expectations here. We will not be able to flick a switch and to see this being changed overnight. Uh, but I am intensely aware that there are literally tens of thousands of people on waiting lists who are suffering, who are in pain and who need our support. Will they have to wait until their treatment is urgent or emergency before they get it now? There will always be clinical priorities that will be set by the NHS, which will, will determine, and of course we'll be treating things like cancer and strokes as priorities. But I'm very well aware that there are people like Stella whose quality of life is really compromised at the moment, uh, and we do need to address those issues. So um, we need to use new technologies, digital um, consultations, all of those things things that, that have we've have worked really well during the pandemic to try and speed up the process. But I'm also intensely aware that the people working in the NHS at the moment are on their knees. You they used are the exhausted. Word energy earlier. They haven't got any, have they? They are exhausted. And we've made sure that we've put measures in place to, to support them. We've put a lot of mental health support in for them. Uh, but of course, they will need some time to recoup, recuperate, which is why we are going to have to ask the Welsh people really to, to be patient, because these are the only people who can really get us to a better place. So you're sitting here saying people like Stella will have to, to wait. They may have to wait those two years, for instance, to have a cataract operation. That's what the situation is. And you're not in a position because there is no money to bring in new staff, to train new energised staff, to take over that baton, if you like. Well, we've already got plans to... Um train uh, 12,000 new people within the NHS, is, all of that is, process is, that is, is starting, so that work is being undertaken. We're opening a new medical centre, a new medical college in North Wales. All of that will be uh, brought to bear and to, to really try and clamp down and to try and clear some of this backlog. But it is going to take time, I'm afraid. What happens um, in the meantime, because COVID hasn't gone away either, we're still mm. tackling COVID. And one of the biggest concerns is, is new strains that are coming in. Yes, you, you mentioned we've had a vaccination programme to be proud of in a lot of respects. But what happens in the autumn when we head into winter, when new strains are emerging and we need some kind of boosters? What's the plan for that? And, and can that happen quickly enough? Is that underway? Well, we don't have to wait for the autumn to see new strains emerge. We've got 57 cases today in Wales of this new Indian variant, which we know spreads quicker within our communities. So we're trying to make sure that we're really focused on, on where those outbreaks are, uh, trying to make sure that our test, track, track and protect uh, system is up and running, and where necessary, we'll, we'll speed up the, the system of so vaccinations in those areas. Will there be a booster for new strains? Well, we, we're looking at that, of course, uh, and we're working with the UK government on that. I know they've uh, made some efforts to procure that already, uh, but we, we still don't know what the new strains strains are likely to be coming at us in future. So all of this we'll have to see as things come along. This is still a, a new virus that we knew nothing about a year and a half ago. OK. Baroness Alina, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sure we'll be uh, speaking to you a lot in the, the months and uh, over the next year to come. Thank you.